Uday Shankar, Rabindranath Tagore, and Mahatma Gandhi. Three names that took India to the world before independence. Uday Shankar unveiled for us, for the first time, the rich tradition of Indian classical dance. He is, above all, the father of creative modern dance in India. Today, his daughter Mamata is one among many who continues her father's trend of creative modern Indian dance. But by the 1940s, Uday Shankar had already revealed himself as a master of it. One of the themes that India took for its cultural policy was unity in diversity. And the unity were the established forms of classical dance, for dance, and the diversity were all the folk dances. And if you look at that scheme, you find there's no place there for a modern Indian dance, for a contemporary Indian dance. I think that things have changed now, and I think it's important that we notice it that contemporary Indian dance is now a big part of the Indian dance scene. My father used to always tell me that don't copy me or don't sort of repeat what I have done. I have just shown you a path. Uday Shankar's dance was his own. It was a dance that he had created from all these components which were part of his life and part of his experience. But it had, over the years, by creating dances, developed into a particular style. If one saw someone dancing in Shankar style, one knew it was Shankar style. But for each of the students, the goal was to take that Shankar style and then make it their own. I have started understanding that what is Uday Shankar style and what is not. It is not, it is very scientific. It has tremendous depth. It has a logic. Every movement has a logic. Uday Shankar, perfect and all-powerful master, governs an incredible 450 muscles of his body. Each one does exactly what he wishes it to do, ignoring the neighboring tissues. Sometimes, you know, we are amazed, you know, to see really how much one can do when the body, the mind and the soul is synchronized properly. And that is the thing, you know, which touches the audience. I think he followed certain rules in his uh, presentations. Main rule 
was uh, make a thing simple which should reach out. Second is to keep the audience hungry for more. And the third thing, always give the audience what they want before they know what they want. Uday was the eldest of seven brothers, four of whom survived to adulthood. The brothers were all raw, but molded by Uday, they blossomed into musicians and dancers and toured the globe with Uday's dance troupe. Ravi Shankar, the youngest, danced with Uday in his youth. Now he is the famous sitar maestro. Uday's father, Shyam Shankar Chaudhary, and mother, Himangini Devi, belonged to a Bengali Zamindari family. Shyam Shankar, Prime Minister of a state in Rajputana, now Rajasthan, was a Sanskrit scholar and a lover of the arts. He made a deep impression on his eldest son, Uday, who was named after his birthplace, Udaipur. India's city of palaces. Uday means rising. He was soon to emerge as the rising prince of dance. Uday's father called him to London to study painting at the Royal College of Art. Uday excelled in art. His mentor, Sir William Rothenstein, awarded him the highest acclaim in art, the Prix de Rome. But before Uday could avail of it, destiny stepped in. chance meeting between the great ballerina Anna Pavlova and Uday changed the course of his life forever. Uday observed Pavlova's every movement. Pavlova observed Uday's perfectly formed body and his walk. Anna Pavlova said, God never gives such bodies to painters and sculptors. They don't need them. Uday was born to dance and dance he must. Uday was transformed overnight from an artist to one of the greatest dancers of the world. He began his career in dance with Anna Pavlova in two Indian dances, The Hindu Wedding and Radha Krishna which he also choreographed for her. Paris was the dance capital of the world. 
after his world tour with Pavlova, Uday moved to Paris to hone his dance skills. Here he met three women who had a deep impact on his life. 16-year-old Simone Barbier was the first. Uday affectionately called her Simki. It is curious how people kept coming into Uday's life when he needed them. Simki, a French pianist, was miraculously changed by Uday into a breathtaking Indian dancer. They remained dance partners for the next 15 years. The second woman was Alice Boner, a Swiss heiress and sculptress. She staked her life's fortune to help Uday launch and also managed his dance troupe. It was the first ever all Indian troupe called the Hindu Dancers and Musicians. They took the world by storm for the next seven years. They showcased authentic Indian dances, music, themes, costumes, choreography and musical instruments. The third woman was yet a child when Uday met her in Paris, 11-year-old Amala Nandi. She was destined to become his wife. Today, at 91 years of age, Amala Shankar recalls. So one day Uday Shankar, Uday Shankar says, can you do like this? Like ding, tang, ta tang, ding, tang, ta tang, like this. And he did it and I showed it. So then he gave a stick in my hand. He says, can you turn, turn this stick? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so I, I could feel the, you know, the rhythm of that. And I immediately then, then he said to my father, she's brilliant, if she takes up dancing, she'll be a beautiful dancer. Vritya Dwandva remained one of Shankar's masterpieces, spanning his entire career. In this dance, he was completely transformed into the god Shiva and mesmerized audiences. His dance was really, you can't explain. It was his personality or it was that inner divine, some blessings that which came out on the stage. He did not look human, he looked divine. It was when she first saw Uday as Karthikeya on stage that Amala fell in love with him. Theatre de Champs-Élysées, Paris. This is where the Hindu dancers and musicians premiered on 3rd March 1931. When the quiet curtains opened, Shankar and his partner Simki were seen seated upstage in gold and glittering jewels as Shiv Parvati. Shankar was a dazzling success. The dances were brilliant and utterly expressive, following each other with breathtaking beauty. The West finally saw the real Hindu dances. 
Uday Shankar molded most of the dancers and musicians who had no training earlier. Tremendous applause followed them. In the next seven years, they performed not in the by lanes, but in the main theatres of the world. A total of 889 shows, averaging one show every three days. Uday Shankar's contribution to Indian dancing was fourfold and tremendous. Ballet, choreography, male solo dancing, musical instrumentation. The Himalayas Almora in the Himalayas This was to be Uday Shankar's next creative leap. A leap towards establishing a five-year degree academy for dance. Uday Shankar India Cultural Centre. Here he proved himself to be a master choreographer. The center was funded by Leonard and Dorothy Emhurst, eminent philanthropists, and established on March 3, 1940. The staff at the center consisted of Uday Shankar and Vishnu Das Shirali, Uday's music director from Paris days. There were also four eminent dance gurus, Guru Kandappa Pillai Bharatanatyam, Guru Amobi Singh, Manipuri. Guru Sankaran Nambodri, Kathakali. Ustad Alauddin Khan, Music, Sarod. The center was unique in that the essence of teaching was imagination and creative dance. He would just draw a line like this, draw a line, and then he would say to them, now, create a dance based on that line and let's see what you can do. And everyone would do their own kind of dance. The Ram Leela, a magnificent shadow play, was Almora's greatest achievement. It started the tradition of Ram Leela, which continues in Delhi till today. 40,000 villagers and sadhus in Almora viewed it from a natural amphitheatre carved between two mountain peaks. Believing wholeheartedly in the spectacle, they shouted, <laughs> Kalpana, the black and white film masterpiece, was Uday Shankar's next project. Three years in the making, at a cost of 22 lakhs, Kalpana was released on February 13, 1948, six months after India got her independence. Headline Scream Uday Shankar's film Kalpana is a lightly disguised autobiography. It shows why Uday hated school. Yes, Uday in Kenana. I say, Buzuruk, Hamare Mulkme Lako. Uday had a unique talent for art, which his art teacher discovered and encouraged.
The film voices concerns about the newly independent India, concerns pent up within the patriotic Shankar. Education, industrialization, cheap entertainment, class distinctions, national disunity. These problems plague us even today. India was independent, but her people not yet awake. Uday Shankar was, as always, ahead of his time. I am a mother of 40 crore people. My children are sleeping in the dark. They are watching a dream of the dream. And I am going to die. Bharat Maa Ke Charno Ko, Dunia Ne Darshan, Sahit, Kala, और सभ्यता का पवित्र तीर्थ माना वही भारत माँ की मूर्ति आज खंड खंड होकर गिर गई Towards the end of his life, Uday Shankar was critically ill. His son Anando and daughter-in-law Tanushri were at his bedside. Anando and I had gone to meet him and Anando had asked him that, Baba, you know, uh, I just want to know that in how can in one lifetime one person can do so many things? Like you're a magician, a painter, a, you know, innovative music, sound creator for music, for his pieces, plus a dancer and you know, so you've made an outstanding film. So he says, no, 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 I have to do a lot, I don't know what to do, there's lots to do now. So he said, no, but whatever you've done is a lot also, you know, I mean, it's either we spend a lifetime being a music composer or a dancer or a magician, so then he says, after you know, he kept quiet for some time, and then he said that you have to be mad to do that. Shankar emerged as a phenomenon more than half a century ago. It was a century we shared with him. We also share a commitment to represent Shankar to the world as he did India almost a century ago. To showcase his magnificent talent and remind ourselves of his great contribution. We have said but little. So much more awaits.